There's too many of them. We won't have enough time. There will be enough time on the next level. We have to go deeper. We're already 17 layers in. If we go any further, the dream might collapse. This is a powerful sedative. No sedative will keep us under for that long. We don't have any other choices. Now plug yourself in. Plan D. What about it? We pretend we're a part of the dream. Blend in. Wait for them to back off. It's too risky. No disguise could be that convincing. What if you were a biologist presenting the metabolic relevance of biofuel? Worth a shot. Biofuels it is. The world as we know it today is powered day in and day out by generated energy. We fuel our cars and jets with fossil fuels, spin turbines to generate electricity, and run practically every aspect of our modern society with the help of electronics and appliances. World energy consumption has been increasing rapidly for decades. The average energy use per person is 10% higher than it was in 1990, and over 26,000 new terawatt hours are being generated per year since the turn of the century. As much of this new power is used in the electrical facilities themselves, for instance as water cooling apparatus and nuclear plants, the global economy is straining to provide everybody with enough electricity. With over 7 billion people now on Earth, and many of them in quickly developing third world nations, energy security is becoming a massive issue. With all of this increasing demand for energy, one might think it a smart choice to look into more reliable forms of electricity generation than the ones our society is currently so readily and quickly consuming. Introducing Biofuel. Biofuel arose as one of the earliest forms of engine fuel. It was first conceived of around the time automobiles were becoming increasingly popular, and was meant to serve as a universal fuel for motor vehicles. At the 1900 World Exhibition in Paris, Robert Diesel demonstrated his new engine by running it with peanut oil. Henry Ford's Model T was originally expected to operate on ethanol, a corn-based alcohol. What stopped these early visionaries from implementing biofuel as the world's major power source? The introduction of petroleum changed the game entirely. Fossil fuels were cheaper, more efficient, and present in what appeared to be endless supplies. The feasibility of petrol and diesel made biofuel practically obsolete for the better half of the 20th century. The passing of the Clean Air Act in 1970, however, changed the game. And as for the desire for clean burning fuels rose around the world, specifically in the United States, fuel additives such as bioethanol quickly became a popular idea. Since then, several successive pieces of legislation have been passed to work towards fewer carbon emissions and a smaller reliance on non-renewable fuels. Ethanol, for example, is a common additive in gasoline, and in some countries it is mandatory that at least a percentage of all petrol contains biofuels. The modern biofuel industry is split into distinct sectors. Conventional biofuels are derived from sugars and oils, and comprise the most popular biofuels such as biodiesel and ethanol. Second generation biofuels are defined as the more sustainable variety and come from completely renewable feedstock. These non-conventional biofuels, such as biohydrogen, do not divert energy away from the food chain and are produced in ways that neither harm the world's food supply nor present a significant threat to biodiversity. How is biofuel produced? This is of course a rather vague question because there are so many different kinds of biofuel. Solid biomass, like firewood, is considered a type of organic fuel because it relies solely on modern carbon-based compounds to create energy. In the production of the more popular biofuels, however, metabolic processes play the most important role in generating electricity. Bioalcohols like ethanol are a widely used biofuel produced via the fermentation of carbohydrates. Most starch or sugar-based foods or ingredients can be used to create bioethanol. Examples include sugarcane, a source most common in Brazil, and corn, which is used most heavily in the United States. Chemical fermentation is what actually produces the fuel to run our machines. The essence of this formula is fairly simple. Glucose, plus a series of enzymes, most of which are also found in glycolysis, equals two ethanol molecules, and emit two molecules of carbon dioxide as waste products. In industry, yeasts are the most common hosts of this reaction, and because they do not typically require oxygen to produce ethanol, alcoholic fermentation is classified as an anaerobic process. Fermentation utilizes yeast or other microbes to convert sugars into alcohol. These sugars are derived from biomass that has been broken down by enzymes, or organic material that has been exposed to extremely high temperatures and low levels of oxygen. Through this process, raw biological material, often waste products or designated energy crops, is converted directly into ethanol, and can be burned in nearly any gasoline-operated engine. Remember, bioethanol is only a single type of biofuel. 
there are biodiesels, in Europe, a popular alternative to fossil diesels. Biogas and solid biomass are other examples of first-generation biofuels, but second-generation biofuels may offer a more reliable alternative to organically produced power. The biggest advantage of advanced biofuels is their non-reliance on food-based biomass. Algae, for example, are not used to produce food or animal feed, nor do they divert resources from agriculture. Algal fuel is a quickly growing subsector of the biofuel industry. It puts to use the photosynthetic properties of algae in order to create energy. The production of algal fuel is based on similar metabolic properties as the production of other biofuels. At its core, it relies on photosynthesis to produce naturally occurring compounds that can be burned as fuel. Algae, through photosynthesis, convert sunlight and carbon dioxide into energy. This energy is often stored in aquatic autotrophs as lipids or fats. Solvents are added to the algal mass to break up the cell structures, and thus the precious bio-oils are exposed. Following a brief refining process, biofuels such as ethanol and diesel can be created. Per acre, algae have the potential to produce 60 times the total oil yield of land-based plants. This is why the prospect of such an industry is so important for renewable energy. Algae are grown in water, but have very little preference beyond this basic standard. Saline and even wastewater can provide the perfect home for entire crops of algae, and while most are currently cultivated in man-made ponds, it's possible that wastewater treatment plants could double as algae farms. Algae have the added advantage of being dependent upon carbon dioxide. Theoretically, whole supplies of renewable, oil-producing autotrophs could be grown with the very waste materials we humans are trying to get rid of. Picture a waste disposal plant situated right behind a fossil fuel refinery. An algae farm right next door could grow entirely off of the brackish water and carbon dioxide from these facilities, producing infinite supplies of biofuel for next to no cost. It's been estimated that an area the size of Maryland could produce enough algal fuel to replace all the petroleum in America. And that's just the beginning. Biofuel as a whole has a host of advantages over conventional power sources. It creates a supply of healthy, alternative fuel, which moderates oil prices to reduce the frequency of cost spikes. Were it not for biofuels, gasoline prices may be 25% higher than they are today. As with all renewable resources, biofuels reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. In Canada, foreign oils are an extremely important commodity. This dependence on imported fuel can be brought down by reliable, homegrown energy. Per unit of mass, biofuels are actually cheaper to produce than conventional fossil fuels. They're also useful in clearing engine blocks and preventing the buildup of contaminants. Biodiesel, when compared to regular diesel, emits much less particulate pollution. And it is this environmental advantage over oil and coal that biofuels are most famous for. Beloved for its carbon neutrality, biofuel is one of the few resource-based energy sources that absorbs carbon dioxide. The plants used to form these alcohols and oils take in carbon dioxide during photosynthesis, and so offset their emissions from the combustion process. Some farms and refineries even offer the promise of becoming carbon sinks while producing energy at the same time. Of course, biofuels are not without disadvantages, and as with all revolutionary technologies, their development has been met with controversy. Depending on the fuel, the same environmental benefits they claim to provide can be offset by severe ecological damage. The large cornfields used to create bioethanol in the United States are just one example of emerging monocultures that can threaten species diversity and environmental health in an area. As with any crop, those used in the production of biofuels take up fertile land and fresh water that could be used to grow other plants. This has sparked a controversy known as the food versus fuel debate. It regards farmland's use for producing fuel rather than growing food, and in the world where over 900 million people are undernourished, it's understandable this is a hotly debated issue. What we will decide to do with our arable land is unknown, but our civilization's need for fuel and electricity is current and overwhelming. As of now, the planet's oil reserves are predicted to run dry in 40 years. Billions of people alive at this very instant will still be around to witness the death of petroleum-based electricity. The future for natural gas and coal is not much brighter. Both fossil fuels will likely be tapped out within the next 150 to 400 years' time, based on current rates of consumption. Even if new non-renewable sources are discovered, humanity's reliance on fossil fuels will need to be reduced if modern society is to survive. Biofuels offer an attractive answer to mankind's problems, they can be easily integrated into existing engines and turbines because chemically they are almost identical to fossil fuels. 
Algae can feed off waste products to produce unlimited supplies of biofuel, and may be the future in completely renewable fuel sources. Biofuels present their own hazards to humanity and to the environment, but ongoing research in fields such as agriculture promises to make significant strides towards securing a permanent, reliable power source and preparing society for the necessary shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy. As our world evolves and develops, its need for power will only grow along with it. The third world is in need of cheap, manageable electricity to supply its burgeoning population, and nations like Canada are struggling as is to reduce carbon emissions and produce reliable fuels. As the days to the end of oil and coal count down, we are in need, no, desperate need, of an alternative. And biofuels might be just what we're looking for. Hey man, you coming to the movies with us? Yeah, yeah, just uh, waiting for this download to finish. It's at 96%. I'll be there in a second.